Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine Martin for IV Family Health Updates. And I'm here today with my brother, Dr. John Martin and Dr. Ed Martin. And we're gonna be talking today about the use of human growth hormone as an anti-aging agent. And as you know, people have been searching for hundreds of years for some sort of hormonal fountain of youth. And there's lots of examples today that you can think of, of using different types of hormones to either uh, stall aging or prevent aging altogether. For example, using DHEA as a nutritional supplement, people using testosterone, uh, primarily in men, older men, to try and serve as a fountain of youth. And probably the most common hormone that's being used is growth hormone. And what is growth hormone? Well, it's a, a hormone that's uh, secreted by the pituitary gland, which is, is it's an endocrine gland in the brain. And its most important function is for normal growth and development in childhood. But it continues to have some important functions in adulthood, primarily for maintaining body composition, which means it regulates the amount of fat mass we have versus lean body mass or fat-free mass. So if you have a normal amount of growth hormone, that gives you sort of the optima, optimal amount of uh, fat mass. And if, you, if your growth hormone levels get too low, it increases your fat mass and decreases your muscle mass. So that's not a good thing. It has other health, health consequences. Yeah, just with normal aging, are we gonna normally see a decrease in our growth right. hormone? Right, so as we're adults, we sort of have you know, sort of steady growth hormone levels. And then as you age, there's this normal decline. So it happens right. to everybody. And people who don't exercise or people who are overweight, you see a, a, a more, sort of a more a, a bigger decline and so that's a bigger issue for them so there are i'm sure you've seen advertising people claiming that because of this decline that represents an important deficiency in growth hormone right. and that we should all be taking growth hormone that this is not a normal decline this is a disease disorder and we should all take uh, growth hormone to restore us back to normal and that there will be some sort of benefit again the fountain of youth concept but there's no scientific evidence to support those claims. It's, it's incredibly expensive to attend one of these clinics, but there are some, you know, to, to convince yourself whether it's worth going to one of these clinics, you really want to look at the scientific evidence, and there are some good uh, scientific clinical trials that have looked at this issue where they've taken healthy older individuals who've had the normal decrease in growth hormone, but they're otherwise healthy, and they've given them growth hormone or placebo, and what you see is it increases their fat mass, excuse me, it decreases their fat mass, increases their muscle mass, but so that's a benefit, but there's important risk side effects. They get swelling, they get carpal tunnel syndrome, they get uh, increased risk of diabetes, of hypertension, so the scientific community really agrees that the risks outweigh the benefits. So giving back uh, growth hormone is not a good thing to do. The Endocrine Society, which is the international endocrine community, really strongly recommends uh, the routine use of growth hormone in elderly individuals. They do recommend it for adults who have severe growth hormone deficiency, for example, adults who've had a pituitary tumor or traumatic brain injury, but for the others, absolutely not a good idea. So for the 50-year-old who wants a a little more bulk and a little more energy, that's not someone who probably has the severe deficiency. I mean, you can test for that too, but right. Um, right. you said very few people actually have that. Very, very few people. It's a simple test. You would go to your endocrinologist, you would do a stimulation test, and you do a baseline blood test, a stimulation test. And if you don't meet the criteria and you don't have severe growth hormone deficiency, and the risks of taking it would outweigh the benefits. Yeah. And I think you've heard professional athletes say, or, gee, if I can really get this benefit, so what if I get a little bit of high blood pressure or diabetes in the years ahead? If they could, you know, get an extra, you know, extra speed on their fastball or extra power in their hitting, it's, it would be worth the risk. I think that argument has been made about athletes. Right. And the, the problem is, if you look at the clinical trials using growth hormone in an otherwise healthy athlete, the benefits that they get, they do get an increase in muscle mass and a decrease in fat mass. So you could argue that's a good thing. But there's a perception that it improves their performance. So they have more endurance and it increases strength. But the, the bulk of the clinical trials have not shown that there's an improvement in strength, no, nor is there an improvement in endurance. So I think some of this improvement that they're experiencing is really subjective, not objective. So I think in that scenario, really, the, again, the risks are outweighing the benefits. And some of these guys do develop diabetes and hypertension. And uh, again, it's a scenario where I would really strongly argue 
that the uh, risks outweigh the benefits. You know, and I read one study where they said that you do have this small increase in lean muscle mass, but that after maybe six months, even that starts to taper off. So you even lose the benefit that you're looking for. Oh, absolutely. It's temporary. Yeah. It's temporary. Yes. And, um, Good point. One other thing that I've read is that there's a theoretical risk anyway of cancers developing because if you have a growth hormone, is it going to stimulate any abnormal cells as well as your lean muscle mass? And could you possibly be you know, triggering these dormant cancers to start to grow? That's a very good question, and it's an important concern. We don't know from athletes taking growth hormone long term or from adults taking growth hormone long term, but we, have, we do know from patients with uh, growth hormone secreting tumors with something called acromegaly, they are at increased risk of developing all sorts of different types of cancer. So we do know that growth hormone accelerates uh, the development of cancer, so it is an important concern. And I was sharing with you earlier, I think it's very interesting that um, you know, there's a doctor in town here, a clinic, where it's $5,000 just for the initial consultation and for your first like month or two of your growth hormone treatments, which to me is just outrageous, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, but people will spend a lot of money to, you know, for that fountain of youth with a magical oh, elixir, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, absolutely. which isn't so magical and, um, no, not so magical and <laughs> lots of potential risks. All right. Well, that's great to hear. All right. All right. Thank you. Right. Thanks.